Today on PlayStation News, the PS5 Pro is said to be developer friendly. Astrobot scores another win in sales. The Splinter Cell remake could be out in 2026. Tomb Raider gets a new remastered version and more. Let's get to it. Hello friends, welcome back to PlayStation News, hoping you are doing great. And we have a new round of PlayStation and gaming stories to talk about. So let's start with the PS5 Pro that is being said that is developer friendly to get enhanced game patches. This is an anonymous developer and Resetera user that shared on the forum a few details on the update workflow for the PS5 Pro. This developer is part of an indie studio working on two PS5 Pro patches, one for an upcoming open world game and the other for a game that is already out, each of them using Unreal Engine 4 and 5, but both games will be PS5 Pro enhanced by the console's launch. They said the process is very development friendly for a small studio, with them getting the games running at 120 FPS and with dynamic resolution, and that's before implementing any of the native PS5 Pro support. It appears that games targeting 60 and 120 FPS will benefit from the console the most, but that will take a while since PSSR is not part of the previous development kits. So far the PS5 Pro has been kind of mocked after the Mark Cerny presentation since the differences between games could not be seen on a compressed video on YouTube, but media that got hands on with the device had very positive things to say. Now are you excited about the PS5 Pro? Did you pre-order the console? Sound off in the comments. Next it seems that Sony may not be giving up on Concord as many people thought, and there are new rumors pointing out to the game's return. So this is some users on Raid that found that Concord files are being updated on the backend on Steam, and that was through SteamDB, with the latest update to the game being made this week on October 8th. This often means that a game is getting either an update or a future DLC, uh, so this obviously makes people think that the game is returning and likely as a free to play. However, many people and even analysts believe that there's no way to save Concord even as a free to play. And besides, like it, the change to free to play is not that easy as the game was designed as a premium game. So we'll see. Do you think that Concord will make a return? Place your bets in the comments. Now let's talk about sales as EA Sports was the king in the US during the month of August. This is the Circana report by Matt Piscatella on threads. And yes, it's still for August as there will be a second report in the month of October for September. So EA Sports was the king for the month and that is the second month straight, this time with Madden NFL 25 and EA Sports College Football 25 as first and second. EA Sports College Football is still the best selling game of the year after it dethroned Helldivers 2 back in July, uh, while the Arrowhead game is still number 2 and in number 3 we have Modern Warfare 3. Back to the August ranking and after college football was Star Wars Outlaws from Ubisoft at number 3, but the game still underperformed for the publisher overall. At number 4 was EA Sports again with the MVP bundle that includes NFL 25 and college football, and after that was Elden Ring at number 5, still holding after the release of the DLC Shadow of the Earth Tree back in June. Rounding the top 10 was Hogwarts Legacy losing one spot from the previous month, Minecraft was knocked down two steps, Modern Warfare 3 lost the most, being knocked down from 4th to 8th. Spider-Man 2 zipped up one spot to become number 9, and after that at number 10 the building for Square Enix was the new Visions of Mana. In terms of hardware, the PS5 is still leading in both units and revenue, and that's despite all consoles including Xbox and Switch being down 36% compared to August 2023. Accessories were also down 3% compared to last year, with the Black DualSense being the best seller in terms of revenue, while the PlayStation Portal still holds the crown for bestseller in terms of revenue, both for the whole 2024. Overall, August wasn't a good month for the US, it was 7% down compared to August last year, and it wasn't worse because of spending on the mobile segment. The results for 2024 so far are only 1% ahead of last year, and that is due to the huge gap in terms of console sales. They are down 20% for the whole year. Uh, but we'll see if they can recover during the last quarter, which is the one where they sell the most. Let's move to Europe, but now for the September results by GameIndustry.biz, where Astrobot secured yet another win. Number one, just like in the UK, was for EA Sports FC25, to no surprise, uh, but it was still selling 2% less than last year in terms of the standard edition, but it was selling more on the premium edition with 10%. Similar, it was the similar behavior as we covered in, the, in a previous video for the UK. 
At second place was the Crew 2 from Ubisoft and just like we covered in a previous video for the UK it was due to a sale for the game that was only 1 euro. Number 3 was for Saber Interactive and Space Marine 2 and it instantly became the third best selling game of the year ahead of games like Dragon's Dogma 2 or Final Fantasy 7 River. Astrobot landed at number 4 with a decent launch and the game secured 34% more sales than Sonic Frontiers, 52% more than Crash Bandicoot 4 and 7.5% more than Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart when compared to those games or those specific game launches. Meanwhile at number 5 it was Hogwarts Legacy from WB Games dropping 2 spots from where it was in August. Closing the top 10 was NBA 2K25 which is another new release for September, GTA 5 that was number 1 in the month of August, uh, Zelda Echoes of Wisdom the beauty for Nintendo at number 7, then the Crew Motor Fest and the new Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown at number 10. Missing from this chart is Star Wars Outlaws and the game launched on August 30 that was enough to make it number 2 in the August chart and for this one it dropped completely out of the top 10 in September. As for hardware the PS5 is still leading consoles in September in Europe and it's the same behavior that we saw in other regions uh, all of the consoles are down 18% including Xbox and Switch and but even even with those results the ps5 is still holding the competition at number one the dualsense remains the best selling accessory in the region during the month of september and it was likely boosted by the new astrobot controller overall it seems like it was a good month for europe with game sales being 20 percent more than last year and several of the games on the chart were new games now what do you think about the ps5 still leading console sales in both the us and europe for august and september respectively and what do you think about the sales results for Astrobot? Sound off in the comments. Moving into some quick stories and this is more of a PC story but it's still related to PlayStation. So Steam has moved ahead of the AV2426 law signed by Californian Governor Gavin Newsom and that establishes that digital marketplaces we have to make clear to customers that they are leasing the game and getting a license to play the game and they don't own any of the digital goods. Whenever you buy a new game on Steam and upon checking out you will be getting a message saying that the purchase only grants you a license to play the game. All console manufacturers including PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, uh, plus marketplaces that sell either movies, music or books uh, will have to do something similar before the law comes into effect next year. We talked about this on a previous episode and how both Sony and Ubisoft were used as examples for why this law is needed, with Sony removing movie content from users in other regions and Ubisoft removing the crew from the, from users libraries last year. Now let's talk about upcoming games as this month we have Neva and Nomala Studios shared some details on PS5 and DualSense features for the game. The game tells the story of Alba and a teenage wolf cop and will use the DualSense for full immersion. It will use haptic feedback whenever you command the wolf to attack any enemies that Alba can handle and it will also use the haptic triggers when the wolf launches into enemies. Besides that, Alva's commands whenever you call the wolf will be heard through the speaker and the light bar of the controller will also change to match the color of the stage that you're in. In terms of PS5 specs, the game will run at 4K and 60fps with a minimal UI and also an elegant score that will make this art from Nomad Studio pop even more. The game is almost here as it launches for PS5, Xbox Series, Nintendo Switch and PC on October 15. Another game coming out this month is Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and Activision has detailed the campaign and some of the rewards that you can get. They shared a full blog on the Black Ops story so far with the major story points and said that Black Ops 6 will take place in 1991 during the Gulf War in a campaign that feels like a summer blockbuster and that is accessible to anyone and just like previous Call of Duty you will be visiting different locations throughout the game. After completing any mission you will be brought to the safe house and there you can upgrade several things to get like new abilities, equipment and also customize your operator. Among the campaign rewards there's 5 weapon skins for pistol, assault rifle and a sniper, a new loading screen, an operator skin and also the pickaxe finishing move and some stickers and charms. Black Ops 6 launches for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series and PC this October 25th. Next there's a new leak from Ubisoft regarding the new Splinter Cell remake in the works at Ubisoft Toronto. It appears the game codenamed North is being made with Ubisoft's own Snowdrop engine instead of the Unreal engine that previous versions of the game have used. So the Snowdrop engine was created by Ubisoft Massive and so far it has been used for the Division 1 and 2, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and most recently with the Star Wars Outlaws. 
So this Splinter Cell remake was announced back in 2021 as a new entry for the series being built from the ground up and at that point it was in very early development stages. These rumors also say that the game could have a 2026 launch but there's nothing set in stone. Now have you played previous Splinter Cell games? Are you excited for this remake? Let me know in the comments. Now talking about more games returning, we have Aspire Media and Lucasfilm Games announcing a remaster for the PS1 classic Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles. So this remaster will have modern controls, 13 unlocked characters from the start, all the levels will be unlocked, and it will also have a versus and a training mode that were not in the original release but were part of, of, of other versions of the game and there will also be a two-player couch co-op and more. This side-scroller Star Wars game launches this January 23rd for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Nintendo Switch and PC. Another incoming remaster is for the next Tomb Raider trilogy with the 4 to 6 games in the series. This new collection is coming from Aspar Media and Crystal Dynamics and features The Last Revelation, Chronicles and The Angel of Darkness, all with classic and remastered visuals that you can switch between, there's also modern controls if you didn't like the tank controls from the game, but those will be there as well. Besides that, there will be some overhauls like bosses getting health bars, uh, there will be 150 plus trophies to collect, a photo mode and more. The collection is up for pre-order right now for $30 on the PlayStation Store and I believe on the other stores as well. And it launches February 14, 2025 for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Nintendo Switch and PC. As part of this announcement, Crystal Dynamics also revealed that the Tomb Raider franchise has sold over 100 million copies across over 20 games and that is since 1996, so congratulations to Crystal Dynamics. Another game making a huge achievement is Metaphor Refantasio from Atlus as it broke 1 million copies sold in its first day. It's also a record for Atlus as Metaphor has become their fastest selling game, but that's because Persona 5 which is their best selling game had a staggered launch in Japan and 7 months later in the West. Regardless, it's still a great result, so congratulations to Atlus. And there you go, that's all the news that I have for you today. Let me know what you guys think about all of the stories that we talk about here, including the PS5 Pro being developer friendly with these enhanced game patches. Uh, what do you think about the, the sales for PS5 in both the US and Europe for August and September respectively? And also the Astrobot sales being really great in Europe. Uh, what do you think about the upcoming Splinter Cell remake coming in 2026? Are you looking forward to it? And besides that, what do you think about the new Tomb Raider remaster? These were not like the, the best games in the series, but let me know if you're looking forward to it as well. Remember that you can find all of the sources for this news in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more PlayStation news videos like this. And also you can find this as a podcast on Spotify, the link is in the description. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.